Video Lecture 9F, Resonance. We begin our discussion of resonance with an example, the ozone molecule. Ozone is an allotrope of the element oxygen that's typically found in our upper atmosphere. Its major purpose is to protect, protect us from UV radiation. We can look at the structure of ozone by performing spectroscopy experiments, which is usually done by shining IR light on a sample. From these experiments, we see that the oxygen-oxygen bond lengths are in fact the same. They're both around 1.3 angstroms. One angstrom is 10 to the minus 10 meters or 100 picometers. However, if we draw Lewis structures, we can draw two Lewis structures for ozone. Each of them have one double bond and one single bond. It is predicted that, from, from previous lectures, we know that a, a double bond is significantly shorter than a single bond. However, Experimentally, we know that the ozone molecule has two equivalent bonds. Therefore, our, our theoretical structure of ozone is not consistent with experiment. When a theory is not consistent with experimental observations, it needs to be modified. Lewis theory was modified by Linus Pauling by the inclusion of resonance structures. Two Lewis structures are resonance structures if they differ by the, in the placement of a multiple bond. The two Lewis structures that we have drawn for ozone do in fact differ by the placement of a double bond. Now in actuality, the double bond does not switch places between the two oxygen-oxygen bonds. In fact, the true structure of, the, of ozone is a hybrid between its resonance structures. We can draw such a hybrid structure in the following manner. Between each set of oxygen atoms, we place, we place a bond that's made from a dashed line and a solid line. This bond represents a bond that's somewhere in between a double bond and a single bond. Notice that in each of our Lewis structures, the singly bonded oxygen atom has a, a negative formal charge. In our hybrid structure, each oxygen has a partial negative charge. This structure represents an in-between structure for our, for our Lewis structure. We can say that each oxygen-oxygen bond is a one and a half bond instead of being a, a double or single bond. And once again, partial charges are in the oxygen atoms. We indicate that two, Lewis structure, two or more Lewis structures are in resonance by placing a double-headed arrow between them. Here's another example. In a previous lecture, we drew a Lewis dot structure for the carbonate ion. Carbonate ion is the carbonate ion is another example of a molecule that exhibits resonance. So we will draw the resonance structures for carbonate. This is the structure that we finished with in the previous lecture. It has the double bond, a double bond on the left hand side of the molecule. We can move that double bond to different positions. Here's a second resonance structure that this, this time places the double bond in a vertical position. The difference between the two structures is that one line, which represents shared electrons, has been made a lone pair of electrons on the left-hand oxygen atom. And the top lone pair 
on the vertical oxygen has been made into a double bond. We can apply the same trick to draw the third resonance structure, which once again takes a shared pair of electrons between the vertical oxygen carbon bond and makes it into a lone pair and takes a lone pair on the rightmost oxygen and makes it into a bonding pair. When drawing resonance structures, we can only move the placement of a multiple bond. We cannot move individual atoms. Carbonate has three resonance structures. Notice that the number of formal charges are conserved between both all three resonance structures. We can also draw a resonance hybrid for the carbonate ion. Notice that we put our solid dashed lines in between the sets of ox carbon oxygen bond, which represents a bond that is somewhere in between a single and double bond. Each oxygen atom shares a par partial negative charge. We can represent we can say that the bonds in between the carbon and oxygens are one and one third bonds. Experimentally, we find that all of the carbon oxygen bonds are around 1.31 angstroms. This is somewhat longer than the oxygen oxygen bonds in the previous example. This makes sense since there are, since the double bond character is now shared between three bonds instead of two. The bond gets slightly longer and a bit weaker.